Hello and welcome. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to perform the skills that are needed in order for you to pass the Prometric CNA examination. I'm based out of Florida, so if I'm showing you something that is um, different than what your instructor or your school has taught you, then of course I need you to go by your formal instruction. And then also, um, disclaimer, uh, <laughs> the training that we're providing here today does not substitute a um, accredited CNA program. It's to help those who are ready to take their test, um, just review their skills, and also we have playlists with multiple practice questions. If you're in Jacksonville, Florida, and you actually want to come to our facility to learn the hands-on skills, we have the CNA exam prep courses, which are two days, and they are great for pre-med, pre-nursing students. It lets you get in, focus on your skills, and the majority of our students pass on their first attempt. All right, so let's get started. The skill that we're gonna be showing you right now is gonna be perineal care. And perineal or perineal care can be performed on both men and women. However, for the state of Florida examination, the skill is performed on a woman only. And we're gonna begin with our known procedures. We've provided privacy, we've washed our hands, and now we're going to don gloves, which means put on gloves. And of course, we've already told the patient um, about the procedure and what we were going to do. So let us begin. All right, so I'm applying gloves to my clean hands and I have my supplies. I have my table here that has towels, washcloths, a bed pad, a bath basin with warm water, and then also soap. For the state of Florida exam, we begin by actually changing the bed pad that's beneath the resident. You would not do this in the real world. You're only doing this for the state of Florida CNA examination. I have the rail down on the side nearest me. I'm gonna remove this call bell because I don't need it. I'm right here with the patient. Whenever you're maneuvering someone who cannot turn themselves, it's a good um, ideal to move their body incrementally. And then I'm also preparing the pad in advance. So I'm gonna roll it halfway in. So I have everything I need. Now I'm gonna move my patient towards me for safety, shoulders, hips, and then legs. I am gonna expose her a little bit more than what I normally would, but remember the curtains already pulled and that I'm doing this for classroom or for teaching purposes. And now I'm gonna turn my resident. The easiest way to turn the resident is by bending or crossing the leg nearest you and then going and using the large joints, the hips and the shoulders, and the hip and the shoulder, and turn away from you. Just gonna reposition my patient to make sure she's okay. Are you okay? I'm going to roll this pad in. I'm going to apply a new pad, right? making sure the pad starts off at the um, upper hip level. Push it through. Try to make sure there's no wrinkles in it. And now I'm going to lay my resident back down. Only for the state of Florida examination <laughs> would you change the pad before you actually cleanse the resident, but that is what's required for you to pass the test, and our goal is for you to pass the test and not overthink the process. If you are tall enough, you can just simply unroll, take out the dirty, put it in the laundry basket, excuse me, the dirty, um, put it in the trash can, roll out the rest of your pad, and then recenter your patient. I'm going to expose you a little and let me cover up your legs for warmth. All right, so whenever you're cleaning a woman, you want to clean the outer folds of the labia the opposite fold of the labia and then go down the center. Because we're only cleaning a mannequin, technically it's already clean, so we're only gonna do three wipes. But in the real world, you would wipe until your resident was 100% clean. So if you're at the test site, you wanna have your nurse test the water temperature. If your water had gotten cold because it took you a while to change the pad, you may want to put this rail back up, cover your patient, and then go get fresh water. When you're preparing your washcloth, 
fold it into an eighth. So when I pick it up, it's already folded, so it's folded into a quarter. Pick it up, and I'm sorry, fold it once more. And then every time you wipe, you just peel a layer, peel a layer, and peel a layer. Every time you wipe a woman, you're supposed to use a different spa on the washcloth. So it'll make sense in a few moments. I'm going to wet my washcloth, wring it out very well. I don't want to have to change my new pad that I just placed. So I'm going to be drying my gloved hands on the towel that's on, the, um, on top of the table. For the state of Florida examination, we do not put soap directly in the basin. We apply one drop of soap to our washcloth and I'm going to wipe the outer lip going down. Change positions, even though it's no soap on that part of the washcloth, because I put the one drop of soap, it counts for the entire washcloth. Don't overthink the process, just pass the test. And then I'm gonna wipe down the center. So I cleanse by going down, front to back. I did one side, outer, I repeat the process on this side, outer, and then I wipe the center. And now I'm gonna rinse the same exact way. Are you still doing okay? I'm almost done. All right, so this is our rinsing cloth. I'm going to dry my hands so that my pads do not get wet. I'm gonna find the corner that I'm gonna be pulling down. And how do I wipe? You're correct. Outer, outer, center. Always wiping down. Whenever you get your new towel, don't let it touch you. And I'm going to dry the same exact way. I'm drying you now. Outer, outer, center. I'm going to reuse this towel for her rectum and her buttocks. I can now cover up the front of my resident. Okay, I'm gonna to have to turn you in order to clean the back of you, okay? We're gonna turn. Remember what we did last time? She came towards me. I'm gonna uncover your legs so it don't get caught. Make sure your arm's out. I'm gonna cross your leg. All right, now I'm gonna turn you on the count of three. One, two, three. You get your repositioned. off your arm. I'm going to cover her for warmth. Try to make sure your legs are not touching the bed. And now whenever I clean the resident, I'm going to still continue wiping from front to back, from cleanest towards the dirty area. We're going to get another washcloth. So now I'm on my um, third washcloth. I'm going to wet it, wring it, dry off my hands. And remember, for the state of Florida examination, how much soap do we apply on our washcloth? If you said one pump, you are correct. I'm going to wipe towards the back. I just wipe the rectal area. I'm going to change spots on the washcloth. I'm going to wipe this buttock up, flip the washcloth, wipe the other buttock. Of course, if this was a human, every time we wipe, we'd see residue. So we would know if we were using the same spot twice. So again, for your CNA exam, don't overthink it. Just remember to check your water temperature to make sure you don't wet that pad, to keep wiping in the correct direction, and to wipe all the areas that you're supposed to wipe for perineal care. You also have to communicate with the resident and the nurse will answer on behalf of the resident. So, so far I've washed, I just rinsed, and now I'm going to dry. And for the buttocks, you can use the back or the palm of your hand. I tend to use the back of my hand only because I've worked in psych and some of those patients can say some strange things to you. <laughs> um, and so if you're in a facility, they may have butt paste or different types of ointments that you could apply to your resident. But for the state of Florida examination, that is not a requirement. Make sure there's no wrinkles behind your patient. That even includes the gown. Okay, I'm gonna lay you back now. We always want to keep our residents aligned. So you're going to reposition him or her back, excuse me, reposition her back into the bed, straighten out her gown, remove any wrinkles. Take off your gloves. I can then let this rail back up, 
clean my supplies, re-glove if I need to do any other procedures in the room, and then don't forget that before you leave, make sure the patient has the call bell, rails up, curtains open, wash your hands, and you're done with your skill. All right, so this has been Eunice Mathis, practicing perineal care. I hope this helps you. If you like our videos, go ahead and like this actual video, subscribe to our channel, and um, if you pass your test and our videos helped you, please leave a comment and let us know. We appreciate you and we wish you the best. Bye-bye. Hello, you all. Welcome back. This is Eunice with Florida Training Academy, and in this video, we're going to show you how to wash your hands in preparation for the Certified Nurse and Assistant Exam Prep course. So remember, with hand washing, if you touch the inside of the sink, you're going to have to say correction, start over, and there are usually, for the state of Florida, two nurses who may be evaluating you. So you just want to make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly. And remember, you'll physically wash your hands before and after each skill or until your nurse tells you otherwise. Let's get started. I'm going to turn the water on. You don't have to use a napkin to turn the water on, but we do so at Florida Train Academy. I'm going to turn that stream down just a little. Testing the water temperature to make sure it's warm. Wet both hands, allow to dangle. You do not need a barrier on the soap, but we're going to get enough soap to make sure that we have suds that will form on our hands. We're going to wash the palms, the backs, in-betweens, around the wrist, and up and down every finger. Keeping your hands lower than your elbows. Repeat, palms, backs, in-betweens, around the wrist, up and down every finger, and your goal is to provide 20 seconds of friction. And we repeated it twice just so you remember the steps. Last, we clean the cuticle and under the nail. Around the cuticle and under the nail. Remember, if the, your fingernails are longer than the tips of your fingers, your nails are too long, they could pose a safety hazard for your patients because you could scratch or tear their skin. And so make sure your nails are cut down for the state of Florida examination. I'm now going to rinse, keeping my hands lower than my elbows. I'm going to dangle. Cut off my water. Do not reuse this napkin. I'm going to dry start and where I am wet. So I'm going to pat and hold. You're not supposed to rub with the napkin because you can leave the napkin's particles on your skin. And again, if you touch the sink, you need to start all over again or at least let the nurse know that you recognize that you made a mistake. Keep drying until you have removed all of the moisture from your hand. And once the washing process is complete, you can go ahead and start your skill. All right, everybody, this is Nurse Eunice with Florida Train Academy. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So I've done the normal procedures. I've washed my hands, I'm donning gloves, I've provided privacy, I've explained the procedure to the patient, I've assembled my items, and also gotten the bed in the position that I wanted in. Remember with the catheter, you always want it flowing independently and freely towards the foot, lower than the bladder. In the real world, there may be some type of securing device, device on the upper thigh. You may or may not have that during the Florida CNA examination. Okay. All right, so we've checked the water temperature. And now I want you to repeat after me. Wash, wash, rinse, rinse, dry, dry. Wash, wash, rinse, rinse, dry, dry. I folded my washcloth, I wrung it well. Make sure the nurse um, has already checked my water temperature. And if you remember from our previous videos, we fold our washcloths into a quarter and we peel back each time we wash. For the state of Florida examination, your water must always remain clean. You apply soap directly to a wet washcloth. Let's begin the washing process. Outer, outer, center. Wipe down and change. I'm going to move your leg a little. Wipe down and change. I'm going to wipe above the catheter. I'm going to change spots. I'm going to raise the catheter gently without tugging. I'm going to wipe the center beneath the catheter. Wash, wash. You cannot wash, rinse, and dry the vagina with a dirty catheter. <laughs> so it's going to be wash the vagina followed by wash the catheter. 
Remember, whenever we're cleaning the catheter, we don't want to tug. That's going to cause pain to our patient. So we're going to pinch at the insertion point. I'm going to start cleaning your catheter now. Talk to your patient as you, um, as you perform the skills. I'm going to take this washcloth that has one drop of soap. I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to go down about three to four inches. I'm going to change positions. I'm going to repeat that process for a total of three times. I'm trying to get as close as I can without tugging. That was wash, wash. What's the next steps? We're going to have to rinse and rinse. So we're going to get a new washcloth, going to wring it out. And now we're going to rinse the same way that we washed. Down, change, down, change, above the catheter, change, gently lift the catheter, wipe down the center. Now, whenever you are rinsing your catheter, even though you had to wash it three times, you only have to rinse it once. Before I start rinsing, what do I have to do? If you said secure the catheter, you're absolutely correct. So I'm going to secure the catheter, I'm gonna pinch it, and I'm gonna clean, excuse me, rinse down about three to four inches, awesome. We can't leave our residence wet. So once we have washed and rinsed both the vagina and the catheter, we're now going to dry. We're gonna go down, go down, go down. If you notice, I'm always changing positions. Go down, and now whenever I dry, I'm going to pinch, pull down gently. For the State of Florida examination, you would have placed the pad before catheter care, and at the end of your skill, you have to remove the pad. In the real world, usually there's always pads beneath your patients. However, for the test, don't forget, catheter care, place the pad, and then remove it at the end. If you need to see how to place a pad, just go back to our perineal care video and it will show you how to do so. All right, everybody, it's Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you're here in Jacksonville, Florida, or if you're in the Florida area, we provide hands-on CNA exam prep classes in two days, which are perfect for pre-med and pre-nursing students. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye. It's Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to empty a urinary drainage bag. And so um, you cannot insert the catheter. However, anything that's external, you're responsible for taking care of. And in one of our previous videos, we talked about how to clean the actual catheter. And in this video, we're going to show you how to empty the drainage bag. Usually you empty the drainage bag at least once per shift. But if your patient's on a diuretic, something that's going to make them diurese, get rid of extra urine or extra fluids, you're going to have to empty your drainage bag more frequently. So I recommend emptying it when it's at least halfway full and or at the end of your shift. So yes, sometimes you may have to empty it twice. Okay, so another skill you could be requested to perform when you're taking your CNA examination is emptying the urinary drainage bag. And so whenever you think about a urinary drainage bag, it should be secured on a non-movable part of the bed, such as the bed frame. There's just going to be a hole or a hook, something you can connect the actual device to. You never want to connect the drainage bag to a side rail because in doing so, the side rail could accidentally collapse and then we can also um, injure the patient. So we don't want to do that. So we have our drainage bag secured. We have our graduate. We have a paper towel. We're going to put this towel on the floor. And then in addition to that, we need one more thing. We need an alcohol swab. For the state of Florida examination, you have to clean the spout after you get through emptying out the urine. Okay, so I'm going to figure out which way to actually initiate my urine stream. For this one, it's just a push button. Usually at your test, they will allow you to practice with the drainage bag before you're actually giving it as a skill. One more thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to hold this bag above the level of the bladder because if you do so, you can make old urine go back into the person's urinary tract. We're going to drain all of the simulated urine from the container. We're going to drain all of the simulated urine from the urinary drainage bag. And then we're going to make sure, and then we're going to make sure that we actually clamp it off. 
We're going to secure it. And before I put the spout back in its pouch, I have to clean it with alcohol. I'm now going to remove my napkin and my graduate from the floor. Okay, so now that I'm in the bathroom, I'm going to pull another napkin, place this graduated container on a flat surface to read. Let's see if you all can see the number. You're not supposed to read it when it's in the air, and you're also not supposed to read it on the side that says ounces. For the state of Florida examination, you're supposed to measure your urine in cc's or cubic centimeters. All right, so once it, stop move, once it stops uh, moving so much, it appears as if I have 250 cc's of urine in the graduate. I would then pour the urine into the commode, whether it's a real toilet or the bedside commode. I would dispose of this napkin I now have to rinse my container. Pour the rinse water also into the commode. Dry the inside of your container. And then you'd replace it and put it back in the bottom shelf where you actually, um, where you actually retrieved it from initially. Don't forget to take off your gloves, wash your hands, document the urine output in cubic centimeters, open up your curtain, make sure your patient has the call bell, and then you are done with your skill. All right, so thank you all for watching. This is Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. I hope you learned a lot. Don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and then I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget, if you're in the Florida area, our website is fltraining.com. Not only do we train some of the best CNAs, we also train the trainers. Yes, we do the CNA instructor courses. I look forward to working with you all. Have a blessed day. Bye. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform range of motion exercises to our patient's upper extremity and also lower extremity. Performing range of motion exercises is extremely important. Not only does it loosen stiff joints, it also helps to prevent atrophy or muscle wasting. Remember, if your patients don't use it, they lose it. So you want to encourage them to use their muscles, to move things, to actually comb their own hair and participate in their care. Additionally, something else that you may not consider is that whenever you have a person move around, it improves their circulation and they're less likely to, to develop blood clots. All right, so we have our wonderful patient actor here. His name is Patrick, and we're going to go ahead and begin. I've already washed my hands, provided privacy. For this skill, I will not be wearing gloves. Let's go ahead and start. All right, so I'm going to start off by exercising your shoulder. Do I have your permission to do so? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and straighten out your arm. If during this process you feel any pain, just let me know. All right, so we're going to bring your arm all the way up as far as you can tolerate. Very good. One. Two and three, very good. I'm now gonna bring it out towards me. One, two, and three. And next we're gonna do rotations, okay? I'm gonna bring it out and I'm just gonna one, two, three. Great job. Did you feel any pain? No. All right, so I'm just gonna fix your shirt just a little bit. And so now we're gonna exercise your elbow. I'm gonna take my supporting hand, go beneath your elbow, and we're gonna do three curls. One, two, and three. Still doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna exercise your wrist. I'm just gonna gently support. I'm gonna have my hand on your palm and we're gonna go down three times. One, two, three. And for camera purposes, I'm not hyper extending, bringing the arm back or the wrist back too far. I'm just going down in a natural position three times. And then next we're gonna go side to side three times. 
last will be our rotations. One, two, three. So let's repeat that. Down and up three times, side to side three times, rotation three times. For the state of Florida examination, you do not have to exercise fingers. However, if you know that one of your residents has arthritic fingers, that could be something you can talk to the physical therapist about or the physical therapist assistant so they can show you how to relieve those stiff joints. Now we're gonna go down to the lower body. So Patrick, now I'm gonna exercise your leg. Okay. I'm gonna go under the calf and support and also under the mid thigh and we're gonna go up three times. Let me know if you feel any pain. One, two, three. I'm now gonna bring your leg towards me the same as we did with your shoulder. One, two, three. And now we're gonna do our hip rotations. One, two, and three. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna exercise your knee. I'm gonna put my supporting hand beneath your knee. And I'm also gonna take my other hand and go under your heel. And that's gonna prevent your heel from dragging. I'm gonna go up three times. One, two, and three. Still doing okay? Now we're gonna exercise your ankle. Let me support your heel so it doesn't drag. All right, we're gonna go down three times. One, two, three. We're gonna go side to side, the same way we did with your wrist. One, two, three. And now we're gonna do those rotations. One, two, and three. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, we're going to show you how to change an adult incontinent brief. We don't try to use the term diaper because that could um, be belittling to an adult. Um, however, if I do use diaper in this video, just forgive me. And um, We have our patient actor here. His name is Patrick. And Patrick has agreed to allow us to train others, including our students, so that they'll know how to take care of an adult resident. I've washed my hands, provided privacy, I've gloved, I have the bed raised to a working height, and now in order for me to perform the skill, I'm going to lower the head of the bed. Let me know if you feel any pain. I have my supplies. We will not be showing the bathing skill here. However, in the description area, I will have a link to a video in which we show you how to clean a male and or a female resident. I'm going to go ahead and take off the diaper. I have my new incontinent brief right next to me, so I do have my supplies. I'm going to release the Velcro fastener, roll it in, repeat that process on the opposite side, you want to take the diaper down, rolling all the moisture in and away from my patient. I would then perform perineal care in the method in which one of our other videos would show you. I'm now going to open up the new diaper or incontinent brief. Make sure you understand the way that your incontinent brief works. For ours, it has the blue straps towards the very back and you have to unfasten or release these before you can start your skill. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. Now I'm just going to bring these in. You always want to focus on safe positioning and safe turning. I'm just going to reach over just a little bit, Patrick, and bring this in. Okay, and now you're good. If I can get you to bring your whole body towards me, good. Okay, and now turn, and as you turn, you can hold on to the rail, I'll assist you. All right, and so now I'm gonna continue rolling this diaper in so that I am containing the contaminants. I'm now gonna dispose of this. If there was something else I needed to clean, I can finish cleaning, the, um, cleaning, finish cleaning his rectum and also his buttocks. But again, we show you that in a separate video. When you're placing your new incontinent brief, you want to measure it first. You want to make sure that it actually um, starts off at the high hip area and that it will be positioned and centered on your resident's bottom. I'm going to take this bottom material or the material that's on the further side of the patient and kind of push it towards him. Are you still doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and get you to lay back. 
I'm now going to bring the front part of the incontinent brief up. You want to make sure that it's um, snug, and of course he has on, on clothing, so it's going to be a little bit harder to make it snug, but for video purposes, just pretend that it's snug. You don't want it too tight. If it's too tight, you can actually chafe your resident skin. And for those who don't know what um, chafing means, it means we can irritate their skin. Now I'm going to secure the incontinent brief. If you can just lean towards me just a little bit. Great job, you can lay back. All right, so that is how you would put an incontinent brief on an adult resident. And of course, for our video, the person's able to move a little bit, but when you watch our other videos, you'll see how to bathe and how to reposition someone who cannot assist you. All right, everybody, don't forget at the end of your skill to take off your gloves, wash your hands, lower the bed, if you lowered the rail in order to take care of the resident, make sure you raise the rail back up, open up the privacy curtain, and just look around to make sure your area is nice and clean. Of course, in the real world, we lower our patient's gown and also pull up the sheet. All right, I hope you enjoy our videos. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. All right, so hello and welcome back. This is Eunice Mathis, the owner of Florida Train Academy. I'm a registered nurse who trains thousands of CNAs. So I do appreciate you for subscribing to our channel. And if at the very end you find this video useful, I want you to like the video and also let others know about our CNA exam prep resources. We have a playlist for clinical skills and also a playlist for the written examination. And our goal is for you to pass your test on the first attempt to get working and take care of our residents. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to change an incontinent brief or an adult diaper. We just don't wanna use that term. And so I have my supplies over here. I have the additional pads. If you need to know how to cleanse a female resident, you can look at one of our previous videos. And then we also have a, a video of perineal care being performed on a male resident also. And so let's go ahead and get started. I've washed my hands. I've provided privacy. I've gloved. I've explained the procedure to the patient and I've already gathered my supplies. The side rail on the side nearest to me is already down. So here we go. So I'm going to release the Velcro, the fasten, the fasteners. I'm going to bring the front portion of the diaper down, roll it, and push it down. The purpose of rolling it is to take all the contaminants down and away. And of course, if you watch one of our previous videos, you've seen how we would clean a female resident. We wipe down, change positions, wipe down, change positions, and continuing the washing process until there's no more urine, then we rinse and we also dry. If you want to see a cleaning video, just look through our playlist and you can see how to clean a female. So now that the person is clean, we now have to prepare our new diaper, okay? Are you still doing okay? All right. And so what I'm checking for now is to see the orientation of the diaper. So this part that has the actual Velcro straps, it's going to go up towards the back, okay? So I'm gonna bring you towards me. Shoulders, hips, legs. Push this in a little, cross the leg nearest me, and I'm turning her away from me. Okay, I moved her first for safety so that she would not be too close to that rail. I'm going to turn you on three, one, two, three. I'm going to push the large bones, the hip and the shoulder. I could then finish the cleansing process. I'm going to remove this diaper. If your patient could hold on to the rail, you can ask him or her to do so. I 
I want this new diaper starting off at the upper hip. So I'm thinking about the orientation and how I want it placed against my patient. Now I'm going to lay her back. Are you still doing okay? Make sure that the diaper is pretty snug. You don't want it too tight to where you can cause um, an indentation or a pressure injury, but you want it snug enough so that um, urine would not see through. And now I'm going to fasten the diaper using the Velcro. And again, the only reason why I'm reaching over and not walking around is number one, because I'm tall enough. And then number two, if there was um, any possibility of me touching the bed, I would just go ahead and walk around, but for video purposes, I will not. You would then recenter your patient in the bed, make sure the rail is up, put the cover back on your patient, clean up everything. Um, Wash your hands, open up the curtain, and just do a quick scan of the room to see if there's anything else the patient needs. And then don't forget, leave your patient with a handheld device so that she would have a way to call you whenever you exit the room. All right, everybody, this is Nurse Eunice. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, just feel free to drop a comment in the um, area below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day. Everyone, we have our inflatable shampoo tub. In addition, we have a drape on our resident. We also have a pillow that's also inflatable, and that actually comes with the shampoo tub kit. And we have our nozzle. We have a bag attached to the nozzle that has warm water in it. We're not sure where the video cut off, but I had previously wet um, Patrick's hair and also applied some shampoo, but we're just going to go through that process one more time because we want to make sure that you all fully understand how to wash the hair of someone who's bedridden. As you're providing the hair care, you want to be looking for um, any lice, any lesions. If someone's in the bed for a long time, they can get sores on their ears, they can get sores in the back of their heads. So you want to make sure you really look. Pretend Patrick's hair is not already wet because again, I'm not sure at what point the video cut off. I'm gonna turn on the nozzle. I'm gonna run some warm water. Always check with your client to make sure the temperature of the water is okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I would not recommend using a whole bunch of shampoo because if you do, you're gonna have to you know, remove a whole bunch of shampoo. The goal for this is just to cleanse the scalp and actually cleanse the hair without causing a lot of work for the actual caregiver. But the, um, one of the benefits is clean hair also helps to improve your patient's hygiene and it improves their self-esteem. And so I do feel some tangled areas in Patrick's hair. I'm going to gently remove those tangles. Don't pull on the hair. And you would start at the ends and detangle working your way to the root. Finish the shampooing process, massaging the scalp. And then once you're done, you're gonna rinse the hair. And this is a wonderful device. I'll make sure I have the link to the actual shampoo bowl in the description area. Everybody. So now that I've actually drained and emptied the shampoo bowl, I'm going to dry Patrick's hair. And of course, you can comb and style it however you would like or how the patient would like. 
And this is not a actual skill for the state of Florida CNA examination, but it is something that I'm going to encourage regardless of your patient's hair type, whether they have natural hair locks on coarse hair such as myself, or if they have fine hair such as Patrick. Providing the hair care to a resident is just gonna make them feel better. Patrick, how do you feel? Better. <laughs> All right, everybody, you would then take off the drapes, remove everything, and um, uh, if you haven't done so, give your patient a full bed bath. Remember here at Florida Training Academy, we train caregivers to provide competent and compassionate care. Until next time, everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to feed a resident. And don't forget that, you know, monitoring your patient's fluid and food intake is so important. It helps to prevent malnourishment. It also helps to prevent, to prevent dehydration. And so at the end of the skill, don't forget to document. And of course, as with every skill, I've already washed my hands. I've provided privacy. I've open the um, excuse me I've provided privacy I've put on gloves I've explained the procedure to our patient and now I'm going to get our patient in the safest position for someone who's going to be fed I'm going to get him upright to a high phallus position is it okay if I change your position now and Patrick is a wonderful patient actor if anyone in Florida is looking to hire this wonderful actor I will make sure that I have the contact information for you and of course right now yes he's giving Jesus vibes I know it <laughs> all right so now that I have my supplies on my table I'm going to go ahead and put a towel on his chest in order to protect his clothing For the Florida Certified Nursing Assistant Examination, you always want to offer the person an opportunity to wash their hands before feeding. And the reason why you want to make sure the resident's hands are clean is because in real life, your patient may either reach up and touch you or they're going to try to assist and touch their food and they're going to contaminate it. So Patrick, half of the washcloth is wet, the other half is dry. Would you go ahead and cleanse your hands for me and then flip and you can dry your hands with the other half. You would now take this and put it in the laundry basket. During the Florida CNA examination, you will have two different food choices. Patrick, is it okay if we feed you applesauce today? And the song or mnemonic that I made here at Florida Trade Academy is hands, water, three bites, water, wipe. Go ahead and repeat that with me. Hands, water, three bites, water, and then wipe. If you can do those five steps, you're going to pass the CNA examination. So I've already washed Patrick's hands. Now I'm going to give him water in order to wet his mouth. The way I like to think about it is if um, you are giving a patient something to eat, let's say it's a biscuit, <laughs> and they're just waking up, they have a biscuit with their breakfast tray, and they're, an, uh, excuse me, and they're um, on oxygen, or if they're on a medication that can dry the mouth, if you just give them a biscuit without giving them water first, it's going to make it really hard for them to swallow. So we're going to help Patrick by giving him water before we give him food. Everything went down okay? Now we're going to feed our resident using a spoon. However, we're not going to overfill the spoon. We're about we're only going to put half of the applesauce. We're only going to put half a spoonful of applesauce on the spoon and we have strawberry strawberry applesauce, which is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you open up for me? Very good. We're going to repeat that two more times. Awesome. And then this is the last bite that we have to provide for the state of Florida CNA examination. Good. All right, so let's go back to our song. Hands, water, how many bites? Three bites, making sure you check the mouth after each bite. And we want to make sure that the food really gets down. So we're going to provide water next. Here's some more water. Everything went down okay? Mm -hmm. For the state of Florida exam, you cannot leave anything wet. So we just gave our resident water. We want to make sure we dry his mouth and his beard. We're almost done. Hands, water, three bites, water, wipe. 
I want you to think about a person who's depressed, especially depression in the elderly. If an elderly person does not want to live, how would they help to ensure that they um, are not with us much longer? I don't want to say how they commit suicide, but the way that a person would die in your nursing home is by refusing to eat. And so after you feed someone their three bites of food, you want to ask them if they want more. Of course, in the real world, you feed them as much of the food as they want. My rule of thumb is if my patients don't eat 50% or more of two meals, I want you to go ahead and notify that nurse because we can contact the doctor, we can get supplements ordered, we can help that person get the nourishment that they need, even if they may not want to eat it, we can use other, um, other mechanical devices to ensure that they're getting the nutrients. So hands, water, three bites, water, wipe. Would you like more to eat? Would you try another bite for me? Just one more bite? Okay. okay. Very good. Here we go. Did it go down okay? And here's some more water to wash it down. All right. I'm so proud of you, Mr. Patrick. Wipe your mouth. I'm going to remove this, okay? You're also going to place your clothing protector in the laundry basket. Mr. Patrick, I know you normally like to lay back, but I have to give your food time to digest. So for about 30 minutes, I will lower you a little, but I can't lower you flat until your food has digested. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Take off your gloves, dispose of your gloves in a trash can, make sure that you lower the bed. If you raise it to a working height, raise the side rail back up, leave your resident with a call bill. Don't forget to document. For the state of Florida examination, food intake is documented in percentages in increments of 25. And so he didn't eat none, he didn't eat zero, and he definitely didn't eat 50%, we document 25%. All right, everybody, this again is Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. We hope that you're able to feed someone safely. Don't forget that after you feed them, don't lay them all the way down immediately. Give that food time to digest so about 30 to 45 minutes later, you can come back and lay your patient down. You know our closing techniques. Open up the curtain, wash your hands, document, check on your patient, make sure they have the call bell. Bye, everybody. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to brush the teeth of someone who is in the bed. I have all of my supplies here, which will include a towel that we'll use as a clothing protector. I have the toothpaste and toothbrush. Of course, I have clean hands with gloves on them. I have the emesis basin, a cup of water, and I'm going to go ahead and start the skill. You want to be mindful of safety. And so in order to prevent our patient from aspirating, what position do we need to put our our patient in before we put water in his or her mouth and if you said upright 90 degrees that's perfectly correct this the Fowler's position can go from 60 degrees all the way up to 90 I just feel more comfortable raising my patient up as far as they can tolerate so I'm going to go ahead and raise our patient are you doing okay today mm -hmm. If you feel like you need to reposition, you can go ahead and do so. I'm going to put a towel over your chest. Would you like a sip of water before we start? Mm, no, thank you. I'm gonna wet the bristles of the brush, apply a small amount of toothpaste. And this one is mint, are you okay with mint? Mm -hmm. And now we're going to perform the skill. Okay. So with my clean gloves, I'm going to go ahead and, and open up your mouth. All right. We're going to start off with the front teeth. So 
going to go inside. I'm going to repeat that process up top. And now that I've brushed all, let me see if I didn't um, cinch your, or clench your teeth together for me. All right, so now that I've brushed all the surfaces, if you'll stick out your tongue, I'm gonna brush your tongue. I'm gonna now give you some water so that you can gargle. Good, and we'll let you rinse one more time and I'll make sure I clean your beard. Very good. Clean your mouth and your beard. So now that I'm done with the brushing up the teeth, I'm gonna throw away my disposable supplies. After emptying the contents of my MSS basin into the toilet, I would have to use a napkin in order to turn the water on because my gloved hands cannot contaminate the sink or the faucet handles. So I would rinse pour out my rinse water, and then I would dry the inside of the emesis basin. Of course, I would store whatever supplies I have left. Don't forget to take off your gloves, wash your hands, reposition your patients, put that side rail back up, and make sure that he has his call bell in his hand before you leave. And then also, remove the protective covering. All right, everybody, this is Eunice Mathis with Florida Training Academy. We wish you the best of luck with your future CNA examination, and we hope that this skill will help you to pass your test and also provide better care for your residents. Have a blessed day. Goodbye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy, and in this video, we're going to be showing you how to clean dentures. We know that dentures are extremely expensive, and so you want to make sure your dentures are in a case. For the state of Florida exam, don't forget that denture care is a two-part skill. After cleaning the dentures, using a denture brush and the denture paste, which they'll have toothpaste, you have to go back and provide mouth care. And when you're providing mouth care, you're pretending like your partner does not have any teeth. Remember, it's just the test. Even if someone did have real dentures, they're not going to take them out just so you can pass your test. So since you're pretending that your patient doesn't have any teeth, Instead of using a toothbrush to cleanse their mouth, you're gonna use that tooth that or swab, and I'll make sure that I have an image um, so that you can actually see what that looks like if you've never seen one before. But let's focus on first things first. Let's focus on denture care. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the cap. And place my dentures on the countertop. I'm gonna put a washcloth in the base of the sink. We know that when dentures come out of someone's mouth, they're really slippery. And so um, we don't want them to hit the porcelain, the inside of the sink, and be damaged. I'm also going to start running some cold water. We only want to use cool or cold running water on our dentures. We don't want the water too hot because real dentures could be affected or reshaped by the hot temperatures. I'm going to go ahead and wet the bristles of my denture brush. At the test site, they may have a use in toothpaste, but in the real world, we use denture paste on dentures because toothpaste would cause abrasions um, that would allow germs to grow on the denture and cause the dentures to have an odor. So tooth um, test site, you use what they have, real world, use denture paste on dentures. I'm going to rinse off the dentures. Remember for this scenario, the person just removed the dentures from their mouth and they're preparing for bed. I'm going to brush all surfaces of the dentures this angular portion, let's say there was some adhesive or something in the denture, I can remove that or some food particles. I can use the um, angled portion for that. Make sure you hold the denture securely. And when you're done, there should be paste all over your denture. You can now rinse. Make sure you also rinse your denture. When you store the dentures in a cup, especially if you have the upper and the lowers, think about the orientation, how they go in the mouth. And that's how you wanna put them in the cup too. So since these are the upper dentures, we're gonna put them in the cup with the teeth down and the gums up. And now so the dentures don't dry out, I'm gonna put water into the cup 
so that the dentures are actually beneath the water. That's going to make sure the dentures are comfortable for your patient. At the test site, your nurse might tell you to pour the water out. Do whatever he or she tells you to do. I can now turn off the water. Remove my washcloth. I'm going to go ahead and take this washcloth to the laundry basket. I can now take my denture supplies back into the clinical room, open up the cabinet and store them. And don't forget, denture care is a two-part skill. After performing denture care, you have to perform the resident's mouth care. All right, everybody, again, this is Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. I hope you liked our videos. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Share our videos with a friend. And if you know anybody who's interested in being a CNA or a nurse, this is a great place to start. Plus, you get to do so for free. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a blessed day. Bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to perform range of motion exercises to our patient's upper extremity and also lower extremity. Performing range of motion exercises is extremely important. Not only does it loosen stiff joints, it also helps to prevent atrophy or muscle wasting. Remember, if your patients don't use it, they lose it. So you want to encourage them to use their muscles, to move things, to actually comb their own hair and participate in their care. Additionally, something else that you may not consider is that whenever you have a person move around, it improves their circulation and they're less likely to, to develop blood clots. All right, so we have our wonderful patient actor here. His name is Patrick, and we're gonna go ahead and begin. I've already washed my hands, provided privacy. For this skill, I will not be wearing gloves. Let's go ahead and start. All right, so I'm gonna start off by exercising your shoulder. Do I have your permission to do so? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and straighten out your arm. If during this process you feel any pain, just let me know. All right, so we're gonna bring your arm all the way up as far as you can tolerate. Very good. One. Two and three, very good. I'm now gonna bring it out towards me. One, two, and three. And next we're gonna do rotations, okay? I'm gonna bring it out and I'm just going to one, two, three. Great job. Did you feel any pain? No. All right, so I'm just gonna fix your shirt just a little bit. And so now we're gonna exercise your elbow. I'm gonna take my supporting hand, go beneath your elbow, and we're gonna do three curls. One, two, and three. Still doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna exercise your wrist. I'm just gonna gently support. I'm gonna have my hand on your palm and we're gonna go down three times. One, two, three. And for camera purposes, I'm not hyper extending, bringing the arm back or the wrist back too far. I'm just going down in a natural position three times. And then next we're gonna go side to side three times. Last will be our rotations. One, two, three. So let's repeat that. Down and up three times, side to side three times, rotation three times. For the state of Florida examination, you do not have to exercise fingers. However, if you know that one of your residents has arthritic fingers, that could be something you can talk to the physical therapist about or the physical therapist assistant so they can show you how to relieve those stiff joints. Now we're gonna go down to the lower body. So Patrick, now I'm gonna exercise your leg. All right. I'm gonna go under the calf and support and also under the mid thigh and we're gonna go up three times. Let me know if you feel any pain. One, two, Three, I'm now gonna bring your leg towards me the same as we did with your shoulder. One, two, three, and now we're gonna do our hip rotations. One, two, and three. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna exercise your knee. I'm gonna put my supporting hand beneath your knee, and I'm also gonna take my other hand and go under your heel, and that's gonna prevent your heel from dragging. I'm gonna go up three times. One, two, and three. Still doing okay? Now we're going to exercise your ankle. Let me support your heel so it doesn't drag. All right, we're going to go down three times. One, two, three. We're going to go side to side the same way we did with your wrist. One, 
two, three, and now we're going to do those rotations. One, two, and three. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to put a resident on a bedpan. And for one of our demonstrations, Patrick is going to be able to assist by raising his hip. In the second demonstration, he's going to act as if he's unable to move. And then I'll show you how to put the bedpan under someone who needs more assistance. For your Florida CNA examination, um, it doesn't matter which technique you use. I usually advise our CNA students to use the easier technique because our pretend patients, when they're taking their CNA examination, should have the ability to raise and lower their hips. If I don't say it in each video, don't forget, I've already washed my hands, I've closed my curtain, and I've already gloved up. If I do not change my gloves, for every step, do realize that this is a training video. If you want to support us by sending us super thanks, that will allow us to provide um, more gloves and buy more gloves so that we can actually change gloves more frequently during our skills. We know that in the real world, you change your gloves and you would not be recontaminating other items. This will suffice for the Florida CNA exam. All right, no more disclaimers. Let's go ahead and get started. Patrick sitting up. I cannot put anything beneath someone if they're sitting on their bottom. So I'm going to lay him down. You doing okay today, Patrick? I'm going to remove this call bell. I'm going to raise up the corner of your sheets here. For the state of Florida examination, there will not be a pad beneath the resident. So you're going to prepare your pad. Remember that the plastic side will go towards the bed, just like a diaper if you're thinking about a baby. And the cotton side will go towards the skin. I'm going to roll this in halfway. Remember for our first skill, Patrick's going to be able to assist. All right, so Patrick, on the count of three, can I get you to bend your knees, number one, bend your knees. And then on the count of three, if you can raise your hips up as far as you can. All right, one, two, three, let's go. Very good, and you can lower. So now that the pad is placed, and remember I did not overexpose my resident, I can now go to the cabinet and retrieve the bedpan. When you retrieve the bedpan, you also want to bring the toilet paper. For this skill, the patient would be able to wipe him or herself. Remember, in the real world, this would be something that the CNA would be doing if the patient was unable to assist. Don't overthink this. It's just for the test. All right. Here's the toilet paper for you to use after you do urinating. Whenever you're placing the bedpan, you want to place it based upon, based upon the form and the shape of the bedpan. For a male, they sometimes have smaller bed pans and then they also have urinals. But for the CNA examination, I want you to pretend that all of your residents are females. <laughs> and because it wouldn't make sense to put this under Patrick if he was just simply urinating. We give him a urinal instead. But for your test, pretend that all of your partners are female and that you're putting a bed pan beneath them to collect their urine. All right, and so now from the side, on the count of three, when I ask you to raise, please do so. One, two, three, raise your hips. Very good, sir. All right, you can lower your knees now. In the real world, you'd actually look between your resident's legs, make sure that you can actually see the bed pan, because if not, you can actually get more urine on your bed and complicate your skills. You'd actually have to then give the person a bath and change the bed length. Now that I've given Patrick the toilet paper and the call bell, I want to raise the head of the bed so that he can really clear out his bowels or his bladder. For the state of Florida examination, you're putting somebody on the bedpan who's pretending to urinate. So this is not a skill in which you have to wipe them. It's just practice. and you're not going to take off your gloves for the Florida CNA examination. You're going to go behind the curtain for about five seconds. And whenever you're done, you'll come back and ask your resident if they have finished using the restroom. All 
right, Patrick, are you finished? All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna take the call bell. If I can get you to keep holding on to the toilet paper until I have a place to store it. You're now gonna lower the head of the bed. All right, Patrick, on the count of three, can I get you to raise up for me? One, two, three. Thank you so much. You can lower your knees. All right, so for a state of floor examination, you'd of course put your disposable pad inside of the trash. For a state of floor examination, you go into the bathroom. You did empty your imaginary contents into the commode. In order to rinse the bedpan, you cannot touch the faucet with your gloved hands. So you're going to use a napkin to turn on the water, get your rinse water into your bedpan, and then pour the rinse water into the toilet turn off the water using a napkin. Now you're left with a wet bed pan. You'd have to then get a napkin to dry it out. And then whenever you're storing your bed pan, you cannot contaminate the cabinets. You will take a napkin to open the cabinet, store the bed pan. May I have the toilet paper? Store the toilet paper. Your gloved hand cannot touch the cabinet. You would use that same napkin to close the cabinet. You can now take off your gloves and wash your hands. However, there is one more step left to the skill. You have to ask the resident whether or not he wants to wash his or her hands. And I'm not an advocate of toting a used um, towelette with my bare hands. So in the real world, you can take off your gloves, wash your hands, put on new gloves. But for the state of Florida examination, you can go through the whole skill with one pair of gloves on. Remember, you're only simulating putting someone on top of a bedpan. They don't want you wasting supplies. All right, Patrick, half of the washcloth is wet, half of it is dry. Would you go ahead and cleanse your hands and then dry your hands with the other half? Thank you so much. Put the used washcloth inside of the laundry basket. Take off your gloves. Fix the bedding. Give your resident the call bell to hold. Would you like your head of the bed raised any? Reposition your patient for comfort, lower the frame of the bed, wash your hands, and don't forget to open those privacy curtains. All right, everybody, this is Eunice Mathis with Florida Train Academy. Stay um, for a few more moments so we can show you how to put somebody on the bedpan who's unable to assist with the skill. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to put a resident on the bedpan who's unable to move. I do have the resident exposed for video purposes only. Of course, in the real world, you would not overexpose your resident. This video will not be showing the cleaning technique. It is literally showing you how to put someone who cannot move on a bedpan and then removing the bedpan. For our classroom purposes, the resident already had a pad, has a pad beneath them. For your Florida CNA examination, you'd be responsible for placing the pad. One last reminder, you do not have to use this particular technique in order to put a patient on the bedpan when you're taking your CNA examination. You can use the easier technique, which is your resident raising his or her hips, you placing a pad in the bedpan, and then removing the items in the same technique or the same skill set. Now we're going to begin. I've lowered the head of the bed, we have our pad, and now I'm going to go to the cabinet and retrieve my items. All right, so I've lowered the head of the bed. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I need to put our patient in a safe position. If I have him or her turn too much right now, they'd be too close to the edge of the bed. So I'm gonna move him in increments and get him closer towards me. I'm gonna use your shoulders. We're gonna come up and towards me. Very good. I'm gonna do the same with your hips and your legs. I'm gonna cross the leg nearest me. I'm actually gonna bend the knee, cross it over, and so now when I turn the resident, this knee is gonna help him remain on his side and something else I can do is just extend the far arm so that he doesn't, he doesn't roll on it. If your bed has rails, you can also ask the resident to hold onto the rail. On the count of three, I'm gonna turn you, okay? One, two, three. Very good. 
smooth out any wrinkles. Your resident should not have wrinkles beneath them. And remember, he's exposed for video purposes only. You will not overexpose your resident in the real world. I'm going to use a napkin, open my cabinet. I'm retrieving toilet paper and also the bedpan. For this particular skill, since the resident can't help, I'm not going to give him or her the bed, um, excuse me, the toilet paper. However, I do have it near me so that I can use it whenever we're done with the skill. Whenever you're placing your bedpan, find the larger collection area that usually goes towards the thigh. The very top of the bedpan goes at the top of the hip. You want to push this under just a little bit, make sure it's centered. On the count of three, come back towards me. One, two, three. Get your hips on it. Okay. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I'll get you recentered in bed once we take the bed pan out. I'm going to raise the head of the bed to make going to the bathroom easier. Before you leave your resident's bedside, make sure you give them the call bell. Of course, um, put the sheets back up. But for video purposes, we're just going to lay the resident right back down and take out that bed pad. All right, Patrick, I'm going to cross your leg. I'm going to secure this bed pan and on the count of three i'm going to help you turn okay one two three turn notice how i held this bed pan down had i not it could have tilted and i could have gotten some of the um moisture the wetness whether it was in urine or fecal matter on my resident you would finish the cleaning process all right let's go ahead and take you back Remember, we're not going to overexpose our resident. He doesn't have to be perfectly neat right now. I can always come back and finish the process once I've finished emptying the bedpan. I'm going to empty the imaginary contents into the toilet. I'm going to use a napkin to turn on the water faucet. I'm going to rinse the bedpan. I'm going to pour the contents into the toilet. I am now going to cut off the water. I can use a different napkin in order to dry out the bedpan. And don't forget that for the state of Florida CNA examination, you have to use a napkin if you have your gloves on whenever you're storing your items. Make sure you also offer to wipe the resident before the CNA exam. As long as you give them toilet paper, the person will pretend to wipe themselves. All right, so now I'm going to recenter my patient back into the bed. Pretend that I have taken off my gloves, washed my hands, and applied new gloves. I'm now going to reposition my patient in bed. All right, so now I'm going to get you back centered, okay? If you can release the rail. All right, I'm going to bring you over. One, two, three. I'm going to do the same for your hips. One, two, three. And your legs. Let's get these legs in line also. Sorry if I scratched you. That wasn't my intent. Are you still doing okay? Mm-hmm. Get that wrinkle out the bedding. You walk around. Patrick, here's your call bill. Is there anything else I can get for you right now? Make sure you take off your gloves. Wash your hands. If you lowered the side rail, you would have raised it before you left your patient's bedside. If you brought the bed up to a working height, don't forget to lower it. Open up your privacy curtains, scan your room, making sure that everything has been cleaned and that the patient's right to comfort, safety, and privacy have been maintained. And if everything is done, you did a great job. All right, everybody, this is Eunice Mathis with Florida Training Academy. We look forward to seeing you in our next CNA training video. Bye-bye. 100 practice CNA exam questions with rationales. 
Question number 1. While giving an unconscious patient a bath, it is important to a. Give passive range of motion to all joints. b. Let the team leader exercise the patient's joints. c. Call the physical therapist to exercise the patient afterwards. d. Exercise the patient only if the doctor has ordered it. The correct answer is a. Passive ROM should always be given with the bath on an unconscious patient. Question number 2. A patient who is on suicide watch should be allowed to have a. A glass container of flowers in her room. b. A leather belt. c. A mirror. d. Pictures of her family. The correct answer is d. Pictures of her family. An inventory of a patient's personal items, including clothing, should always be made on admission, and unsafe items should not be placed in the room. Question number 3. A patient chokes while eating. The first thing the nursing assistant should do is, A. Ask the patient if she is choking. If so, perform the Heimlich maneuver. B. Call for a licensed person. C. Slap the patient between the shoulder blades. D. Tilt the victim's head back and give two quick breaths. The correct answer is, A. The Heimlich maneuver, also referred to as abdominal thrusts, is an emergency response technique that can save a life in seconds. It is a simple action that will often dislodge food. Question number 4. A patient who has been depressed and complaining of feeling hopeless suddenly appears happier one morning and says that everything is okay now. A good nurse aide. A. Congratulates the patient on getting better. B. Watches the patient more closely. C. Voices concern to the rest of the staff. D. B and C. The correct answer is, D. A good nurse aide watches more closely and voices concern to the rest of the staff. A person with smiling depression can appear to be cheerful, optimistic, and generally happy. They may smile to attempt to hide signs of depression. Question number 5. The circulatory system consists of the A. Heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. B. Blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. C. Heart, aorta pulmonary vessels, and lungs, D. Blood vessels, lymph nodes, and spleen. The correct answer is, A. The heart, arteries, veins and capillaries. Question number 6. It is important that dressings remain, A. Tight to keep out bacteria. B. Loose to admit air. C. Clean and dry. D. Untouched until ordered removed. The correct answer is, C. Clean and dry. If the dressing becomes soiled or saturated, notify the nurse. Question number 7. Drainage bags from urinary catheters should A. Be kept below the level of the bladder. B. Have clear urine, without sediment. C. Have their output measured. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the answers are correct. Always keep the urinary drainage bag below the level of the bladder to prevent urine from flowing back into the bladder from the tubing and urine bag, which could cause an infection. Nurse aides should also monitor the color and clarity of the urine and empty the drainage bag when half full and at the end of the shift. Question number 8. A patient tells a nurse's aide that the foods on her tray conflict with her religious beliefs. The nurse's assistant should. A. Tell the patient that it is all that is available. B. Leave the tray there in case she changes her mind. C. Check the patient's religious preference on the chart. D. Take the tray away and notify the charge nurse. The correct answer is, D. Take the tray away and notify the charge nurse. Because religious rights and cultural beliefs are protected, failure to adhere to all laws and regulations regarding religion and culture may result in legal difficulties stemming from discrimination. Question number 9. A nurse's aide notices blood in a patient's IV tubing. The aide should, A. Notify the nurse. B. Do nothing, that's normal. C. Try to flush the tubing. D. Stop the IV. The correct answer is, A. Notify the nurse. Most nurse aides are not legally allowed to prepare or give IV injections, or stop IV infusions. Question number 10. A patient calls the nurse's assistant and says, Someone spilled water onto my bed. The nurse's aide observes a moist area around the patient's perineum. The nurse's aide should. A. Tell the patient that she has obviously had an accident. 
B. Tell the patient to ask for a bedpan when she needs one. C. Change the linens and make a mental note to offer the bedpan more often. D. Ask the doctor for an order for a catheter. The correct answer is, C. Clean the patient. Then change the linens and offer the bedpan more often. Assisting the resident to use the bedpan every two hours helps to decrease accidents. This is also referred to as bladder training. Question number 11. In report the nurse's aide is told that one of her patients has been ordered in PO after midnight. The aide should A. Take away the water pitcher at midnight. B. Offer frequent snacks. C. Note all water the patient drinks and all output. D. Ask the patient if he is having any pain. The correct answer is, a dot take away the water pitcher at midnight. NPO means nothing by mouth and is a term used to identify patients who should not receive fluid or solids by mouth. Question number 12, a patient is leaving the hospital. The family has been told to change her dressings BID the wife asks what does that mean. The nurses A tells her to change the dressings. A twice a day. B three times a day. C once a day. D only when needed. The correct answer is, A, twice a day. BID is a medical abbreviation meaning twice a day. Question number 13, while taking a rectal temperature the nurse's aide should insert the thermometer and, A, go on his break. B, hold on to the thermometer until it can be removed. C, take care of other patients and return in 3 minutes. D, stay in the room until it is time to read the temperature. The correct answer is, B, hold on to the thermometer until it can be removed. Care must be practiced when taking someone's temperature rectally. The rectal wall may be pierced or other pain may be caused by incorrect usage methods. Question number 14, before performing any procedure an nurse aid must, A, identify the patient. B, wash your hands. C, explain the procedure. D, all the above. The correct answer is, D all the above. Identify patients to ensure that they receive the correct treatment or procedure. Hand washing reduces the spread of germs. While, explaining the procedure allows the patient time to ask questions and involves them in their care. Question number 15, a patient has a diagnosis of psoriasis. Her nurse's aide should, a. Avoid contact with the highly contagious lesions. b. Wear gloves for patient care. C. Treat her the same as any other patient with a non-infectious disease. D. Wear a mask when entering the room. The correct answer is, C. Treat her the same as any other patient with a non-infectious disease. Psoriasis is not contagious. The skin condition cannot be passed from one person to another. Question number 16, which of the following will not put undue strain onto the back? A. Crossing one's legs. B. Lifting with the knees. C. Slouching. D. Twisting the back while moving patients. The correct answer is, B. Lifting with the knees. Body mechanics is a term used to describe the ways we move as we go about our daily lives. It includes how we hold our bodies when we sit, stand, lift, carry, bend, and sleep. Poor body mechanics are often the cause of back problems. Question number 17. Which of the following is not true of blindness? A. Most legally blind or visually impaired people have no sight at all. B. Diabetes is a cause of blindness. C. Always identify yourself before touching a blind person. D. Ask if a blind person needs help before giving assistance. The correct answer is, A. Most legally blind or visually impaired people have no sight at all is not a true statement. In fact, most people who are legally blind have some vision. Question number 18. Which of the following is not true of dementia? A. People with dementia act uncooperative to be spiteful. B. They can have hallucinations. C. People with dementia are often frightened and anxious. D. Grooming is difficult for patients with dementia. The correct answer is, A. People with dementia act uncooperative to be spiteful is not true. Dementia patients who are mean and aggressive are most likely feeling fear anger and embarrassment because they have been asked to use skills that they no longer have. Even extreme dementia behavior, such as pacing, rummaging, and wandering, should be addressed calmly and compassionately. Question number 19, which of the following is associated with smoking? A. Pneumonia. B. 
B. Heart attacks. C. Vitamin C deficiency. D. All of the above. The correct answer is, D. All of the above. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Smoking also increases risk for tuberculosis. Question number 20. Most of our calories should come from A. Protein B. Fats C. Carbohydrates D. Vitamins The correct answer is C. Carbohydrates The carbohydrate food group is one of three sources of nutrients and energy necessary for human survival. Carbohydrates are composed of a diverse group of foods, including grains, fruits, milk, and vegetables. Question number 21. Bloodborne infections include A. Hepatitis B. Pneumonia C. Shingles D. Urinary tract infection The correct answer is A. Hepatitis Bloodborne pathogens are viruses and bacteria that are found in the blood and can be transmitted via blood. Question number 22. Diabetes is A. Common B. Often associated with obesity and sedentary lifestyle C. Controllable D. All of the above the correct answer is, D, all of the above. Certain lifestyle changes can reduce the risk of diabetes. These changes include eating a nutritious diet with plenty of fiber, moving more, getting enough sleep, managing your stress levels, and avoiding smoking. Question number 23, goals of arthritis care include, A, preventing contractures, B, decreasing inflammation and preserving joints, C, strengthening bones and muscles. D. All of the above. The correct answer is, D. All of the above. For arthritis, goals typically include improving the mobility and restoring the use of affected joints, increasing strength to supporting the joint, and preserving the ability to perform daily activities. Question number 24, which will not prevent pressure sores, A. Repositioning or turning the patient every 2, 2, hours. B. Applying lotion to dry skin C. Keeping bed linens clean, dry, and free of wrinkles D. Scrubbing and rubbing the skin vigorously The correct answer is D. Scrubbing and rubbing the skin vigorously Prolonged rubbing on the skin makes the skin sting or burn, and you develop a mild, red rash. In severe cases, chafing will include swelling, bleeding, or crusting. Question number 25. Why should heat not be applied to a diabetic resident's feet? A. The feet have more oil glands. B. Diabetics have decreased sensitivity which means they cannot feel the heat and could cause a burn. C. Their feet are dirty. D. It makes their feet wrinkle. The correct answer is B. Diabetics have decreased sensitivity which means they cannot feel the heat 